Hello, everyone. Welcome. Just going to give it a moment while I see everyone connecting to audio. Welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, this is Brooke Aikens and on behalf of Q1 Productions and IBA Industrial, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar and thank you uh, for joining us. Today's webinar will focus on new technological advancements in x-rays and we'd like to thank IBA Industrial again for sponsoring not only today's webinar but our series of webinars as of late. Uh, just a reminder, you can visit the IBA Industrial uh, YouTube page to see all of our previous webinars in the series, uh, but we're very lucky to have Mr. Jeremy Breeson, Director of Product Management and Innovation at IBA Industrial, uh, speaking with us today. And again, he's going to be presenting on the latest progress in accelerator technology. Uh, as always, please note that a copy of the, today's presentation recording will be sent to all registered attendees upon completion of today's webinar and will be available at a later date on the IBA Industrial YouTube page. Uh, we have dedicated a few minutes at the end of today's presentation for Q&A, so please feel free to submit your questions and comments for our presenters at any time during today's presentation via the Q&A option that is in your Zoom toolbar. Uh, should we have anyone dialing in through the phone or anyone that does does not have uh, the Zoom toolbar, you can certainly feel free to submit questions and comments via email to webinars, W-E-B-I-N-A-R-S at q1productions.com and I'll ensure they're included. Uh, again, feel free to submit your questions and comments at any time. And I do encourage you to be as specific as possible when sending these through. Please feel free to include an example to better assist Jeremy and our other speakers in thoroughly answering uh, your questions. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, today's presenter, Jeremy Breeson. Uh, Jeremy has been working for IBA in research and development and innovation since 2011. Before joining the IBA industrial team, he was a researcher in the field of physics and bioengineering for more than 10 years in prestigious universities and research programs. Uh, he attended the accelerated management program at Solve Brussels School uh, after his PhD in physics. Uh, today, he manages the product management team in charge of developing the industrial irradiation solutions and applications of tomorrow. Uh, right now, I'm going to hand it over over to our featured presenter, Jeremy. Hello everybody, it's me again, Jeremy Brison, Director of Product Management here at IBA Industrial. And today I'm extremely happy to be here in this beautiful beam factory, a little bit south of Brussels, half an hour drive, uh, typically in Belgium, to present this grand finale of our first webinar series dedicated to e-beam and x-ray sterilization. So as you've seen during this first series, we really focus on product and process integration. We really believe that this is key, this is the key value we want to deliver to our stakeholders, to our businesses, but most importantly, to the patients who need sterile and safe medical devices every day. But today we are back to our roots, we are back to our passion at IBA. I will be interviewing some of the best experts of IBA. You will see them in a few, in a few minutes. Uh, you see that uh, they have dedicated their entire career almost to innovation in the field of uh, irradiation and sterilization. And so uh, I will start with our first guest in a few seconds with Michel Labs to discuss about the innovation related to this big baby that you see there, the TT1000 for X-ray sterilization. See you in a sec. We are very lucky to be in front of a TT1000, so that's the Rodotron which is used for the X-ray sterilization. And I say that we are lucky because actually this is the sixth uh, to be produced uh, by IBA and the, the production time is approximately two to three months. So uh, we are very lucky to have this one before it's shipped to its final destination. I'm also lucky to, today to have with me Michel Apps. How are you Michel? I'm fine, thank you, Jeremy. Michel Abs, who is a, an expert at IBA, uh, and since 33 years now, you are the master behind most of the innovation we find on the Rodotron and globally on the IBA product. So we'll try today to really look at this X-ray technology and to see what are the main differences between uh, this accelerator and uh, an E-beam accelerator that I've seen on the other spot over there. And we'll see, uh, Michel, to try to understand how innovation has served to actually make this technology more accessible more reliable, uh, make it a really a real industrial solution for sterilization today. 
Yes, Jeremy. In fact, we we brought a lot of, a lot of innovation on this uh, TT1000 uh, in the let's say five last year. Uh, one important is that uh, now this machine is based on the modular approach, or mo modular architecture. So it shares uh, many uh, component uh, subsystem with the classical rhodotron, uh, cavity, part of the magnet, but especially the RF system. And this um, machine is equipped with uh, three RF systems that work in, in parallel, that are the same as we use on the TT200-300. Uh, Michel, I would like to go back a little bit. So the first TT1000 was uh, introduced in 2000, I think. And as we, we have shown in the, the first, uh, the previous webinar, the main difference between an EB machine and an X-ray machine is that because of the efficiency of the conversion, which is typically 10 to 12%, this machine needs to make very high powers, right? To have 60 kilowatts of EB, you need 600 kilowatts of X-ray. And so the source of power is really the main difference between an EB machine and an X-ray machine, right? Yes, that's why we have to equip the machine with three RF systems that gives us total power of about a bit more than 800 kilowatts. So 100 is used for the cavity, the rest is for the beam. And uh, if you don't need that level of power, you can easily switch off one or two RF chain. Then you can save the, the lifetime of your, your touch road. And also in case of failure, that it would be interesting to have so that's All full redundancy, three, actually. It's a full re redundancy of the RF systems. With one amplifier, what can we treat? Something like, uh, I think it was 40,000 pallets a year, something like that? How much power do you have with one In amplifier? power, it's uh, about 150 kilowatt uh, available for the beam. With two RF systems on, it would be 400 kilowatt, a bit more. And then we can go up to 700 kilowatt. That's everything great. it's uh, it's on. But Michel, how did you come to this idea? Uh, what what did actually push you to innovate on this TT1000? Uh, the main goal was to get rid of the expensive and, and let's say difficult to procure direct road from Thales. So here we are really on standard components that we are used to to buy, to install, to tune. It's a, it's really a big advantage. I remember that Diac Road was that one megawatt tube, which actually actually is a good tube huh? because it's very robust, but yeah, it was yeah, complex yeah, and it was an expensive spare part, right? Yeah, uh, and we are not sure about uh, the supply of this tube in the in the future, so we wanted to to get rid of that. Excellent. And so, did you try it on site? Is it easy to uh, to tune to install as as a uh, as for C? Yeah, it has been designed to to be really easy to tune. There is nothing to do to let's say synchronize your, your RF system, you can change uh, a tube, a driver, and uh, it will restart like uh, it was before. Cool. Michel, I also see that this magnet one here seems to be very different from a, a simple EB machine. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? W what is it exactly? Yeah, this is uh, the idea from the beginning. Huh? That when we started the, the development in the year 2000, uh, we saw already on previous Rodotron that the limitation was really magnet one and two. And so we designed this magnet, which is full of chromatic uh, bending uh, to have more acceptance of the beam in the first two passes. So this machine can go up to 100 milliamps. Is it something complex, this magnet? Or it looks complex, is it? No, it's not. Simple magnet, just a big, a big one to make yeah, more. Yeah, it's low impact. power magnet. Uh, it's actually more tolerant than a small magnet. Yeah, 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 because of the achromaticity of the magnet. Yes. Excellent, Michel. I'll change subject. Uh, I, I know that the last, last years you've been working really hard with your team on the, the new solid state power. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? What, what is it exactly, and what is it key for the technology in the future? Yes, we, in fact, uh, five years uh, ago started to, to think about how to replace vacuum tubes from our machine, which is a single point of failure, expensive device, and we are not sure about the future, about that. We see that the price is going up very quickly and uh, procurement is always difficult. So we, we look at the solid state technology, which is basically transistors, 
Um, and uh, yes, we developed uh, an amplifier that you can see behind me. That's what we see there in the back. Can you show us a little bit how it works and, uh, and what it is? Yes, yeah, Jeremy, this is the, an example of what we developed during this five last year about a solid state amplifier. This cabinet can uh, deliver up to 100 kilowatts, power supply included. This is groundbreaking. Um, it is based on a, a module that works in, in a parallel, and each module can deliver six, seven kilowatts continuous power. They are easily removed and plugged in. And then if you have a failure, um, you can replace a module in, in 10 minutes. It's a fully, let's say, modular architecture in the sense that you can lose part of the amplifier, small device is inside, the system can continue to work. Um, there are many other advantages in this technology about uh, the control system, power supplies that are a commercial product, no more customized uh, device. Um, and uh, we really believe that this is the future. What are the main advantages of this technology, Michel, compared to tubes, except obsolescence? What, what is the, the best? Uh, are there other advantages? Yeah, so the, the fact that it's modular, you can reach a theoretical av availability of 100% of your system. Because you can start having some device that fail, you can wait the next maintenance to exchange a module and then you restart. But you, it will not stop your production. Mm -hmm. um, it works in a low voltage, so no dangerous voltage inside so such amplifier. 50 volt compared to it, 10,000 volts? 50, 60 volts okay. and no high voltage. Okay. Tuning? Complex on this? There is no, absolutely no tuning. You change a module and you restart. Wow. Plug it's and play. Uh, let's say, what we say in, uh, in RF, it's broadband. So it covers 10 megahertz of, uh, of, of bandwidth. Okay. So you have absolutely no need of tuning. Wow. It seems to be a groundbreaking, uh, Michel, technology. Yeah. And such a cabinet, uh, probably in the future, will be able to drive directly uh, a cavity of a small TT250 kilowatt. Small only one machine cabinet will only replace the complete RF system. And so you, you designed that from a blank page? This is fully, uh, fully designed from, yeah, from you? Yeah, more or less, yeah. Wow, congratulations. Try to, to keep the, the best ideas and uh, we have also some patents on, on okay. uh, this kind and, of architecture. And so we already have this, this system on the TT1000 today? So today it's a kind of a hybrid system. We still use on the TT1000 tubes, but the driver are based on that technology. Okay. But like you, you, you see, this is ready for full solid state, but we want to validate the system perfectly before put it on the, on the market, of course. Okay. So I guess that in four years from now, all machine will, new machine sales will be full solid state. Very exciting, Michel. I invite you to come back to continue our discussion. Michel, uh, lately we have seen an increasing demand for multi-energy with the, the X-ray. I've seen demands for the food industry, for example, at 5 MeV, 7 MeV. Uh, I remember in Strasbourg we introduced this uh, new dual energy in the same uh, horn with the Rodotron. How is that coming along? Yeah, so we, in fact, we introduced this very nice uh, feature of so-called delay magnet, uh, which is uh, just a magnet that we added to the system so that, like yeah, a, a bit bigger, um, and that just by turning on and off one magnet, you can switch from uh, five to seven MeV with absolutely no beam degradation. So you can still get your full beam uh, current uh, at five and seven. This is just done by inverting, let's say, the, the polarity of the cavity for the last pass. So when you arrive at six, six MeV, you you or you work normally you gain one MeV more and you arrive to, to seven or you go in this delay magnet it's a small delay it's five nanoseconds for the beam 
and then the beam arrives when the field is decreasing the energy uh, back to five. So if I understand well, there is a second magnet here in the back. You choose either this one to synchronize with the accelerated beam with the cavity, or you delay the magnet, the beam, and you re-inject when the polarity is inverse, and you decelerate. Exactly. Right? Nice. And is it working? Is it already installed? Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's already installed, and it's the, the commissioning was uh, as smooth as a uh, well-known machine, so absolutely no Transparent problem. Transparent and easy. Directly uh... to full beam current. It's a very, wow. a very nice system. I, I like remember, it. Michel, you told me that the first Rodotron, you calculated it only with an Excel file. Uh, is yeah. it still the case, or how do you do to make uh, everything so no, today predictable? Today we have a team of uh, fellows uh, that, that uh, developed uh, code calculation code for, for the beam, so we can track particles that start it really from the Egan and goes the full acceleration, taking into account all the, the effect on the beam uh, even the effect in the beam itself, in between the particles, which is called the space charge. And so it, ga it gives a lot of confidence on the final result, of course. Very nice. Michel, if we, we try to wrap up, what I see is that 10, 15 years of innovation to simplify the system, to de-risk it, to depend less on, uh, on components that we don't actually uh, control. So now we have really a machine which is ready for uh, industrial deployment all around the world, which is simpler, simpler than ever. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, they, that, that's uh, really a nice tool that we have now for uh, this market that restarted. So we started the, let's say the IBA vision of X-ray started uh, in the year 2000, where we built the first prototype it, it took time to, to take off, but now it's there, market is there, and we have the perfect tool. So, uh, Thank you so much, Michel. I'm really excited to see your next invention, and I'm wondering what it's going to be, but I know it's going to be brilliant, like always. So we will invite now our, our next uh, speaker. So 33 years of experience, now we'll talk about control system, because it's also important, Michel, to interlock those machines, to access it remotely. And so we're going to invite uh, Pierre-Yves Louis, who has been a software engineer and now an architect at IBA for more than 17 years. Uh, I'm glad that we'll talk about PLCs. Thanks, you, Michel. Thank you to you. So welcome, Pierre-Yves. Hello, Jeremy. How are you? Fine, and you? Yes, good. I heard you were part of the team who installed uh, the TT-1000 delay magnet. Is that true? Yes, that's true, yes. Was it uh, as easy as Michel said? Yes, it was very easy. So To switch energy? Ah, to switch energy is an easy challenge, so we, we can do that in less than one minute. Huh? So the first thing to do is to put the machine in access or lower state, and then you are able to change the energy. So you have to wait something like 20 seconds, the time to do the magnet cycling, and then you can restart high voltage, radio frequency, and then switch to beam on, so in less than one minute. That's cool, I want to see that. But today, pierre you are here to talk about something else, PLCs and innovation around control system. But first, tell us, what is a PLC? It's a good question. So PLC means Programmable Logic Controller. Huh? A Programmable Logic Controller is an industrial digital computer that has been adapted for manufacturing processes, for the control of manufacturing processes. So such like a conveyors, robotic, accelerator, so any activity that requires high reliability, ease of programming and process for diagnosis. Okay, thanks. Pierre-Yves, I know that you have doing, been following these PLCs for 17 years now. And you told me, okay, I've reached the, the final step of innovation with it, the universal cabinet and the universal code. What, what is it? So the universal cabinet, uh, so we designed this cabinet, we built this cabinet in order to be compatible with all the industrial accelerator. So I mean that we can control all the e-beam accelerator using this kind of cabinet. And this cabinet was also designed in order to perform upgrades for the previous system, the S7400, to the new PLC, the S7-1500. What do you do when you have uh, options, different beam lines, delay magnets? You have a, a new code or...? No, 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 no. The, the thing that we can do, so we have the, the cabinet, and uh, for example, if you have a second beam line, the thing that we can do, we can add a second deported cabinet linking with the Profisafe field bus 
to the PLC. Okay, so you can add any component very easily in the code and your code is modular so you can play with it. So in the end, it's easier to install, it's faster to install, it's faster to maintain. When you have a bug, you can simply uh, upgrade all the sites uh, remotely. And so that's really the innovation that you bring with this new uh, universal cabinet. Yes, right. correct. And we can also install, uh, if you want in to install a motor, huh, link it to Profinet, it's also possible. Huh? We did it for the X-ray movable target. Huh? Okay. Nice. Can you show us a little bit uh, how it looks and uh, what are the differences with the, the old generation? Yes, okay. yes, yes, for sure. So Let's take a tour. Yes. So Pierre-Yves, uh, this is the latest uh, PLC. Can you explain us a little bit uh, the, the different uh, modules and the functionalities uh, of this uh, universal PLC? Yes, this is the latest uh, PLC cabinet. So and, uh, inside this cabinet, so first of all, we have the, the server. So the server now is located inside the cabinet. And uh, inside this server, we are using virtual machine. So I mean that there are one virtual machine to control the Rodatron and the other virtual machine are to control the process control system. So we use virtual machine, why? Because in case of crash, it's very fast to recover the virtual machine and uh, we are also uh, independent of the hardware. So, and then you can see we have um, three different parts. So in the middle, you can see this is the new PLC with a small uh, touch panel for the first diagnostic. And uh, this PLC is the S7 1518F series. So it means it's the more powerful on the market with a PLC life cycle less than one millisecond. And we have also the safety functionalities. That's why we are able to use a safety board because this is yellow. And so I mean that this PLC can control the rototrons, but can also manage the entire safety system. So and link it to the PLC, we have different kind of board. So we have a digital input, digital output board and safety board, but also analog input and analog output board. So this is the major difference uh, uh, compared to the previous cabinet. And uh, that's all. Nice, Pierre-Yves. And if I, if I want to go with uh, Aaron Bradley, for example, is it easy to interface the Siemens technology uh, that we have here at IBA with uh, other technologies, other brands? Yes, so this is, this is uh, one advantage of the Siemens. So Siemens is fully compatible with all the devices. So I mean that if you want tomorrow to communicate with a different kind of PLC, that's possible to do that. And we can also communicate with all the equipment, uh, for example, like this uh, SSR cabinet. Huh? We, did an, we, we, we do an interface between this computer and also this one, so it's fully compatible, yeah. I've seen that there are thousands of parameters that we can control, the temperature of the modules, etc. This is really uh, what we have with the solid state, is that everything is accessible uh, remotely, actually. No? Yes, 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 exactly. We can display all the information on the interfaces, yes. Excellent. So I invite you to come back and to tell us more about uh, the safety system. Okay. Welcome back, Perry. So. What, what do you mean exactly by safety? Is it machinery safety? Is it radiation safety? What exactly is behind this word uh, safety? So like I said, uh, the PLC is also a safety PLC. So it means that uh, the PLC can control the rototrons but can also manage the entire safety system. So I mean the complete safety system. Huh? When I speak about safety, so I mean um, the goal is to secure the world where there is the rototron and also to secure the irradiation cell when we are doing the production, when there is the horn. And uh, in order to, to secure the zone, so IBA can also provide all the safety devices. So I mean that IBA can provide the door lock to be sure that the door is locked and the intelligent uh, muting barrier that we use to control the entrance and the exit of the product. We can also provide deported I.O., deported safety I.O., li linked by Profisef, and also radiation monitoring to monitor the, the radiation inside the vault, but inside the irradiation cell too. And also such device, like a new device, for example, is the emergency lifeline. So it's like an emergency push button, but uh, you just need to, to do that. And uh, so we can, we, we can provide everything in terms of safety. 
and also uh, we reach also the performance level E, so it's the maximum. So the safety is fully validated by IBM. It's above the, the required level by the standards, I think. Yeah? Yes, yes, correct. Required uh, following the risk analysis was the performance level D, but we reached the E. Okay. So these are the yellow modules that you show uh, before, huh? the, safety, uh, the safety modules. And do you interface also the fire system and the, the ozone systems? The yes, yes, correct. So uh, when we are doing the safety, we need to receive some, sig some signals coming from the customers, huh? like the fire, like the beam stop water flow, uh, like the ozone flow to be sure that the extractor is working. So uh, everything is uh, included in the safety system. So Pierre-Yves, I see that you have a, a nice uh, you know, and, uh, and, and finalized really industrial solution for the control system of the Rodotron and you are always up to date with the latest technologies of the Siemens products, which is uh, really reassuring. But uh, Pierre-Yves, now if we look at the future, we have this uh, COVID you know, uh, crisis, we know that we cannot fly as we used to. Uh, how will that actually impact innovation with control system? And have you done already something uh, to adapt to this COVID crisis? Yes, uh, and uh, even before the, the COVID crisis, uh, we did a lot in terms of remote control connection. Uh, I mean that right now we are able to have access to all the machines using a remote connection. So um, it's faster because uh, we can tune the machine using remote control connection. Uh, we did it. Huh? Uh, but we also provide some uh, camera to the customer so to help the customer during the, the COVID crisis because we have to maintain of the machine. So, but we want to, to do step forward. So uh, the next goal is to collect a maximum of critical data, but not only to connect, we want also to exploit, to analyze, to use the data in order to, to get a better diagnostic and also in order to do preventive maintenance. And uh, we are not starting from zero because uh, IBA already developed a solution on the prototherapy side and this, this uh, solution is running. But we have to adapt this solution to the industrial business unit. Very interesting. So we want to be more proactive to start doing uh, proactive maintenance to, de to detect defect in the system and to, to better anticipate actually uh, what we could be replaced on the machine. And so this is a nice combination with everything we've seen uh, today. So thanks you, Perry, for this very nice intervention. Thank you for taking the time to explain us the, the PLC. And now we will uh, welcome our next expert, uh, which will be Dominique Vincent, who has also been a very long time at IBA and working on uh, process control and architecture of the integrated solution. So I hope you are having a good time and you enjoy this presentation of our latest innovation related to X-ray technology, but also eBeam. So welcome, Dominique. Hello. How are you? Fine. Good. You're, you're also a software guy, an IT guy, and you've been the master of the process control system of IBM Industrial for, for a long time now. How long have you been working on these, uh, these systems? 17 years now. Already? It's a long time, yes. Wow. <laughs> so you're very well known of our customers out there, and uh, I'm sure they're happy to see you. So we have seen that the, the X-ray machine has evolved a lot. The last 20 years, we have better uh, control system. But in the process, can we also um, innovate? Can we also progress and how is as the system innovate being innovative for the last uh, years after many years of uh, experience with the the process control system we develop and we have now a real product that we are calling Beagle Suite and from the customer feedback Beagle Suite is giving the the best user experience uh, with, based with the the last technology and meeting the business expectation. In, in terms of business expectation, for example, we deploy Beagle with a certificate of compliance with the FDA CFR 21, part 11, and Eudralex uh, Annex 11. Uh, the IBA product is based on uh, a modern technology using the high-speed PLC to um, to manage the process control in real time. And in the other hand, we have also the uh, virtual machine uh, for the, 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 report, uh, the reporting, for the, the receipt management, for audit trail, for the parameter history. At the end, we have really a flexible uh, modular, modular solution and uh, also uh, evolving solution by design. 
Okay, great. So actually, you spent a lot of, of time uh, on site. Huh? I know in China, all around the world, to to really learn about the process, see how we could optimize it. And now your innovation is to put all that in a product, the, this famous Beagle, and uh, and you, you're really proud and, and happy with the result you got on site. So how many of those are there in the world now? Is it uh, a couple or? Yes, we have 20 uh, IBA PCS wow. process control system for now, and the last generation is almost 10 at the end of the years. Okay, site, yes. and uh, you said it is very flexible and customable. Uh, can you let, tell us more about that? What is the modularity that you can bring to a process control? The, the flexibility is really because we can customize the operator uh, interface with the local language or with the customer data without any concern. We can find also the modularity when we start with the Beagle control. This is part of the Beagle suite. Uh, for integrate uh, an accelerator with a piece of conveyor and go to the full complete uh, Beagle Suite system to, to have a full functionality. But I don't know if we have a lot of time to discuss about that. But just one point, it's an evolving solution because we can really uh, exchange data with a lot of different systems uh, in IT, but also on the field. For example, we can integrate the customer RP, we can integrate also some uh, automated uh, storage or dosimeter reader. Well, for sure, we are really open to, to connect to all the industrial device. And for example, in the last project that we did, uh, we integrate the QR, invisible QR code on the box for the tracking system. This is really an innovation. Yes, and I see also more and more of these robots to palletize, unpalletize, and, and actually each beagle is kind of different, right? It's, a, it's something that you adapt for every customer, every process, every product, and that can be easily adapted to, uh, to the, final, uh, the final factory, actually. Uh. Yes, there, there is a really a, a big part of customization, but also thanks to the beagle master software that help us also to commissioning in a very short time because it's pre-validated, it's the product itself. Huh? Okay, I dream, I dream really to bring new features to this uh, PCS in the future, like Monte Carlo, or I don't know, but uh, I think we have a very good base there to, uh, to continue to innovate on the, on the process control. Dominique, back to the, the big guy there. What, what is really specific to X-Ray that we can find in the process control system? You know that uh, the X-Ray process is slower than E-beam process, and that's why we I integrated more the robot for loading and loading, but also automatic storage, uh, the, the scheduling, uh, the, the those simulation in the product also. It's something in that we are including also in the Beagle suite dedicated to the X-ray system. And how do you manage? Like the, the main difference is that we work with pallets. So we said 120,000 pallets potentially in the center. So you manage that from the truck in the warehouse, and then you have to swap the pallet sometimes for the four sides. Is that all automatic in the, in the Beagle? Yes, that's, this is really the, the mindset, easy going. We, we need to, to forget the, the process constraint and just focus to optimize uh, the product in front of the beam and optimize also the beam just to, to uh, reach the maximum performance on the product. Easy going, I love it. Thank you, Dominique, Thank you. for this great intervention. Uh, looking forward to see you on site for the, you. the next adventure of the, the Beagle Control, Beagle Suite, and congratulations for this great uh, innovation. Thank you. Now we move on with the uh, last speaker of the day, also an expert for a very long time at IBA. We welcome Frédéric Dessy, who is our product manager in charge of X-ray system and really developing the X-ray technology uh, to industrial standards that we need. So welcome, Frédéric. Hi. The last expert of the day today. It's, it's a bit different because you've been working at IBA for 15 years, but mm -hmm. most of this time you, you, you were in proton therapy, bringing proton therapy to more patients. And today you joined Industrial to work on the X-ray integration. Yes, How indeed. You? Oh, very good. Very good. Happy to be here and to be able to discuss about those quite interesting system and explain you also how we, we build those one and what we can provide to our customers. Excellent. So Fred, uh, 15 years, it's your career. It's, it's also the time it took for the first X-ray project to, to reach, I would say, profitability, to be really efficient. The project of today, is it also taking so long? 
No, 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 of course not. We we work, and as you've seen, what that Michel work on the um, amplifier there, the P PIL and Perry was working on the uh, PLC system. Dominique explained you about the uh, conveyor and how we can manage the different product and control the different system there. And nowadays we work and once we receive an order and the first pallet being treated, it took 18 months mainly. And we also try to, to work a lot on simplifying the life of the, of the customer. One example of that is that we mainly uh, need to measure the energy of this system, measure the beam energy, and we develop a specific device for that. So this means that in one or two clicks, the customer and the user can really measure the energy of the system. And that's the, where we would like to go. And that's what we have in mind when we build the system is how can we simplify it and can, how can we really go to, to the, the best uh, solution for our customer. Yes, it was very an important issue for the X-ray community was to be able to demonstrate that the energy is well controlled and reproducible. And we know that it's very reproducible with the Rodotron, but now we have a device to, to measure it in a single click. Yes, indeed, indeed. So, Frédéric, uh, you, you, you know a lot about proton therapy. We know that Gamma has been established uh, sterilization for a very long time. How is today the X-ray technology leveraging on everything we have learned for uh, dozens of years? of sterilization with the radiation uh, and gamma. So we, we had the opportunity to, to go and to visit some customers that in, indeed have a gamma center. And there we, we look at the conveyor. They told us, oh, you know, our conveyor is really working fine. We got uh, around 99% of uh, time with the system. And so based on those discussions that we have with, with the customer, we mainly look indeed at their, their conveyor. We go to the people that build mainly those kind of conveyor and we also uh, try to optimize as well the, the the conveyor system because there we've seen that on the on the conveyor they have they can lose some space and if they lose space this means that they, they will lose in terms of throughput and so there we work with with the the people that provide the conveyor on a way to really optimize also optimize the loading of those uh, towed system and there while doing that we gain around we can gain around up to 20 percent in terms of throughput which is quite important for our customer because there they can treat more product in less time and uh, use the the, the the total electricity that the system is consuming yes yeah, so really maximizing uh, the, the throughput that we have in front of the beam, taking advantage of this beam because we can start and stop it, but finally it's on 8,000 hours in a row per year. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that every photon is used at its maximum because uh, indeed. we know that that's also CO2, it's energy, it's cost, uh, etc. Indeed, indeed. And so you, you still see some innovation in the product handling and the process uh, itself. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, because there, there we, we, we speak about the, the optimization of the tool, but of course we need to look at the global system. So mainly when the truck is arriving, uh, providing the different palettes and when the truck will go out of the of the factory so we work on the the full integ integration meaning that we we were thinking and Dominic also explained that that with Beagle we are able now to uh, mainly look at what is the, the the size and the shape of the palette what is the weight of those one based on that we can then optimize the total load to have an optimization in terms of different density that can be treated and so all those kind of things are part of what we can deliver now to, to our customer. Wow, that's excellent. Fred, I see a lot of, of customers out there and uh, investors looking to, to test X-ray, you know? I remember mm -hmm. when I started my career, I was putting dosimeters in, uh, in these palettes that I would send all over the world. What, what has changed uh, today? So yes, indeed. And th this was really one of the challenge at the, the beginning of X-ray because there, there was no center, or almost no center, where you can t test your product. Is my product compatible with X-rays? Good, good question, you don't know. And so now we, we have an, a center, we work with one of our partners, Aerial. And so there, uh, in their center, they have X-rays at two, two different energies, so five and seven MeV. And the, the, the center they have built is made to test those different products. And so there you can arrive with your product, you can uh, request them to have either just one box to be treated or a full palette to be treated. And we, they can make the, the exact dose mapping of your product. And so there you can really ensure that your product will be compatible with X-rays. And uh, we, we work quite uh, closely with them uh, to, to, to make those kind of tests. 
Yeah, I heard that they do also a lot of testing for the Neblo project, uh, which aims to uh, to compare the different modalities to show which polymers can be actually compatible with uh, X-ray or not. And so that seems to be a very uh, interesting pro program. Yes, in indeed. And, and, and what is quite interesting is that I, I was there and I was making one of these, those experiments with them. And it was really interesting to, to see uh, how they can handle those products and how they can put those products in different conditions under different temperatures and so on. So that's, that's really a, an exciting program and we hope to have the results quite soon. So it's really applied research and uh, at the same time you can test your product and you get actual data to, to, for your business case, for your throughput analysis and, and so you, you get more accuracy than in the past to, to prepare your X-ray project. Yes, and, and you can even go to up to the level what is my uh, system consuming and uh, you can there really fine tune your, your business model and, and being sure that you will, you will uh, be successful once your system will be installed. Excellent. Fred, I have a lot of questions for you. Um, two very short ones. Um, X-ray, the key will be electrical consumption. We mm -hmm. hear a lot about that. Is it yes. something uh, that IBA is addressing, working on that? Do yes, you yes, yes. We, we, we have a lot of our customers that ask us, you know, you have 560 kilowatts of beam and mainly the, the X-ray targets will transform the, the, those five out of those 560, only eight or 12 percent will be X-rays. Others, all the, the remaining one, that's physics, will be heat and will be just heat that will be uh, exchanged in water. And so this means that we need to, to, we need to think about how can we reabsorb those, I will say, lose energy. And yes, this is something we, we start, we just launched a program and we, we have customer that ask us how can they mainly uh, re get all the this energy out of the, the water that is used to, to cool the system. Yes, I've seen that no IBA is B Corp certified, so I guess being uh, carbon neutral in the future for Israel would be, would be amazing and uh, I know you are working on it. Yes, that's one of our challenges. Unfortunately, Fred, is already time to, to move on with our president, Thomas Hervez. So I'm going to thank you. Thank you for stopping by. A uh, lot of success in the, 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 the near future of X-ray, which is really exploding right now. We see a lot yep. of project prospects. So keep in touch and see you next time to, uh, to present more about X-ray technology and innovation. So now uh, it's already finished for the, the technical discussion, the expertise. We will invite our president, Thomas Servet, to give us the, the final words of this first uh, webinar series. I'm very excited to announce already that we'll have a second one uh, because, uh, you know, it's very difficult to, uh, to stay in touch with COVID, but we like to, to make these webinars to, to keep discussing with you and to, to keep presenting uh, how the technology is evolving. So. We'll see you in the fall uh, and uh, thank you so much for listening to this uh, webinar and if you have any question, don't hesitate to call us or to ask during the Q&A session. See you. So hello Thomas Hervé, how are you? I'm fine and you? Good, good to see you to conclude this very nice uh, series of webinars. So Thomas Hervé, I know you've been uh, the boss of innovation at IBA. So you've been behind all these technologies, you have been the, behind the, the accelerator group, you push the, the solid state technology really hard uh, at IBA. So today you see everything combined in a, in a real product. How do you feel about that? How does it inspire you for the future? Oh, inspiration is, uh, it's a serious word, you know, Jeremy. Uh, and uh, yes, I feel very inspired. Um, uh, I feel very inspired. Uh, first, first, you know what? by our strategy, uh, by the fact that um, if you look at the history and the market today, we were pioneer in the accelerator in X-ray. And today no one is ignoring E-beam and X-ray when they won't like to expand, let's say, their business and invest and develop themselves. So this is for me very inspiring. I, I guess that we have been at the right place, at the right moment, to offer the right, off the right product, the, the right things to, to to people. This is one first thing really uh, inspiring me. Okay. Um, another thing is uh, what I have seen during that presentation, where uh, you see that we have the best engine, the best accelerator, most more the performance you know, energy efficiency. Uh, a lot of things that are really already well known 
for the accelerator combined with um, a new conveying system, a new way to bring the product and to basically master the process. You know, this is the first time I see it being so, you know, ready to be used by the customer. So it's very inspiring for me. It's, it's, it's really going from an engine to a complete solution. And the last thing which is really inspiring to me, it's all what I've seen. I'm sorry guys, but it's, it's IBA, it's IBA DNA. And you see Michel, uh, 33 years <laughs> and still having IDs, everybody, every day. Yes, yes it's, it's, it's incredible how we can bring innovation, how we can bring new features, how we, and, and how we can share it with the customers. With, uh, it, it, this is a real interaction. And so oh, it, it's really inspiring, of course, because you have a market, you have a product, a right fit to it, and a right behavior to match it. So yes, it's really inspiring. Excellent. So Thomas, now we are concluding this first uh, series. Huh? Already six webinars. We've seen a lot of things. The Zimetry, Aerial has been involved, accelerator integration. How do you see the, the next series? What do you want to do? And what, how do you see the future and the rest of the year? Oh, yes. OK. Uh, you know, you know uh, for, for a conclusion of that series of, uh, of um, webinars, uh, my first word will be wow. I have seen so much innovation, so much new features. Now we can, we can bring different energies in the same beam line, just switching on or off a, beam, uh, a, a, a magnet. We can uh, use solid state amplifier. We can have redundancy in the RF systems. We can have the process control, which is completely integrated. So it's first, it's conclusion, wow. Okay, second, it's, it's about thank you to you speakers, thank you to the, also the, all the attendees of the webinars. We had, we had so many, we had people, so many people, you're right, guy. Hundreds you know, of people. We had so many hundreds of people, they really interact with us together. And so we were uh, able to give them some message, but also receive so much insight to help us for the, for the next roadmap. A great connection despite the COVID uh, time, so we've been so close to It's, it's just incredible. So uh, how can you conclude much more better than this? And as we had so many interests, you know, in that series, we take already the appointment starting from September, October. Let's have a rest during the summer ah, to prepare you. the next stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you really, yeah, it you, would be good, huh, some, some vacation. <laughs> because we are working all together on that. But you know, already this year, we will launch, launch sorry, the, the next series of webinar, because this is, again, uh, really in, in, in agreement with what IBA is sharing, innovation and sharing. And we will do that even more. And we continue to share with you, customers, during uh, you know, the last quarter of this year. Excellent. And I know we'll have very important projects being installed during the summer, so there will be more innovation to show. And to, we will have share, even, so more, uh, even more stuff to, to present. So how could we uh, better conclude this uh, first webinar series? I think it was a great uh, finale today, so uh, very happy to see you all at this webinar and we'd like to thank you. And Thomas, thank you all the, 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 the thank you who followed all, us. Thank all of you. Uh, on average, I think it was 300 people uh, subscribing to these uh, webinars. And so it's very a pleasure uh, to talk to you, to present us your our product and our strategy. And uh, see you in the fall for the next series. Thank you, everybody. Uh, lovely to see your incredible state-of-the-art facility um, and at this time I would like to welcome all of our panelists to uh, join us for Q&A. We have dedicated time. I'd like to invite uh, Jeremy, Dominique, Fred, uh, Pierre, everyone to uh, turn on their cameras and join us uh, for the Q&A session.
Um, and while they're doing that, again, to our attendees, please do um, continue to submit your questions and comments for our speakers. We certainly do uh, appreciate those. Hello, Jeremy, Fred, Dominique. Uh, again, Hello, thank you so much. Uh, to all of our attendees, if the video was lagging a bit for you, we will absolutely be sending it through. So again, you can see their beautiful state-of-the-art facility there in Brussels. Uh, but thank you again to our speakers, and I'll be jumping right into uh, Q&A. Uh, Jeremy, first question is up for you. Can you please describe what the main benefits in fruits and vegetables are, please? Oh, it's a great question. Uh, we see a lot of demand right now, especially in the in North America for in Central America for food uh, series, uh, food sorry, uh, phytosanitary and uh, sanitization. And um, the main difference is that because the dose is much lower than in sterilization, you know, it's a factor ten. Uh, this big power of GT1000 is not needed. Actually, we see in the calculation and the, the experiment that we do uh, with uh, different fruits like mangoes and apple that with 150 kilowatts, so one RF chain, you can already uh, treat huge volumes uh, of, those, uh, of those fruits and vegetables. So in this case, the, the second uh, RF chain, the modularity of the rhododron would be used for, uh, mostly for redundancy and would increase a little bit the uptime from maybe a 97% to a 98, 99, but it's not needed for the, the, the process itself. What is really key for the, the food industry is really to work on this, uh, the conveyor, because we know that uh, because the dose is low, we need to move a lot of product in front of the beam and also to work on the cold chain. You know, it's very important to maintain the, the cold chain during the, the, the entire process. And so this is really our, our, uh, our focus right now is to work mostly on the process uh, for food than for uh, than the accelerator, which is a uh, way oversized, I would say, for this application. Thank you so much. And of course, to our other contributors, please do feel free to uh, contribute if um, I'm directing a question to someone in particular. But uh, moving right along, thank you again, Jeremy. Uh, Dominique, in the US, the Rockwell PLC is very popular in the industry. How do you see that integration with Beagle? Yes, the, the quick reply is that we are really open to integrate all the industrial device. But behind this, uh, Beagle is really running and validated on a Siemens PLC. And we can control and exchange with all the different type of uh, PLC. Uh, for sure, it's an industrial device that we can communicate with in Profinet, with TCP IP or Modbus. Uh, just in conclusion, I can say that we, on the last eight projects, we have installed and integrated five conveyors running on a Rockwell PLC. That means that we are ready for the challenge to integrate the Rockwell PLC. And more than this, we are ready to, 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 uh, to have a next challenge with a Mitsubishi, Schneider, Omron, Honeywell, or ABB PLC. We are really ready for the challenge. Very exciting. Thank you so much, Dominique. Um, again, please submit these questions in the Q&A so we can uh, keep them monitored. Um, moving right along, um, uh, Jeremy or, uh, or Michelle, you spoke um, about the multi-energy machines. Do you see a tendency of industry and regulators to align on one specific energy value over the other and why? Great question. Yes, that's another great question uh, from the audience. Uh, all, the, all the system we provide right, right now are either 5 MeV for X-ray, mostly, mostly food, 7 or 7.5 for sterilization in X-ray again, and 10 MeV for E-beam. Uh, we believe there is room uh, to work on uh, certainly on the, the regulation, but also to, to get more data to see if we could treat with X-ray at higher energy. Uh, so that's really important that we, 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 we get this data. We do a very scientific and really well-controlled experiment to see how much we, we, act, we activate some product or not. And for example, we did this great experiment a few months ago with Fred uh, in Strasbourg to look at what really caused the activation of uh, the X-ray target uh, with uh, a 7 MeV. And we saw that it, in this case, it was not the product. It was not the energy of the beam. It was the water, the cooling water, because it contains... Uh, you know, hydrogen. And we saw that it was coming from the Terum, actually, the, the activation. And so it's really important that we continue to work on this because we know that um, having a higher energy means also more efficiency, uh, more tr bigger throughput. And so we, we really want to keep working on that and to convince uh, later on the regulators if we, we, we are sure 
that it's safe for the, the process and, the, and again, the patients. Thank you so much for that, Jeremy. Um, Amit, I did see your hand raised and I was gonna call on you. If you're still here, uh, please feel free to raise it again and I can uh, call on you, but please continue to submit through Q&A, everyone. Um, moving right along, next question is for Fred. Fred, lovely to see you. Thank you again for your participation. Uh, you are talking about the processing control. I would like to know if IBA has an online domestic system to measure the dose delivery in product during the irradiation. Thank you for, for this question. Effectively, that's that's one of the challenge we, we have. Uh, putting an online dosimetry system, uh, we know it will be quite difficult because any electronic will mainly be destroyed by the by the beam. Uh, so what we what we mainly record it is other parameters like the, the beam current, like the, the speed of the conveyor, and we have all those information that I store uh, in, in Beagle. And so this means that's uh, using those information that we can go back to the dose that has been delivered to the, to the product. So that's mainly how we are, we are dealing with that aspect. Lovely, thank you so much for that perspective. Uh, Pierre, who's also on the line, Pierre, welcome. What is the PLC lifetime? Uh, I wanna say between um, 15 and 20 or so, but I recommend to change the PLC every 15 years in order to, to have the latest technology and uh, also in order to be compatible with the new IBA solution. Uh, for example, like the profiness communication between the PLC and the new NICE SSC cabinet, for example. So the answer is between 15 and 20 years. Well, it's actually Pierre, we say Pierre Yves in French. Pierre Yves. Pierre -Yves. Oh, my apologies, yes, Pierre. It's Pierre nice, Yves. Hein? It's, it's très joli. Beautiful. It's not a problem. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, Fred, next question is for you again. Would you help your future customer to start their production? Yes, definitely. Uh, we, as you, you, you could see in the in the presentation, we are working to to work on uh, being and providing an integrated solution and ensuring a good startup is really important for, for us. And for some of our customers, they are mainly discovering a new field and uh, they are discovering dosimetry and validation aspect. And so uh, we are working now to, to have a team of uh, people that will have experience to, to help our customer to do that with the IQ, OQ, PQ. And uh, one example is that the first step in this direction is that we, we work on the energy measurement device for the for the X-ray. Uh, and this is a way to, to mainly help our customer and to uh, speed up their, um, what I will say, commissioning of our startup of the, of the system. Lovely, thank you. And I wanna get through two questions uh, quickly here. Uh, so again, next is for uh, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, what will be the next innovations in, of IBA in terms of accelerators? Another great question. Yes, it's great. You know, a few years ago, we introduced this TT50 and uh, it was uh, like a con condensed uh, uh, mix of innovation at IBA, pulsing mode, uh, uh, high temperature cavity. And uh, actually, we could not finish it as we wanted because we have, we had so many challenges in parallel. So a few months ago, we released uh, the high energy rhodotron. Super happy with that. We made a 40 MeV beam for radioisotopes. So that's uh, almost behind us now. It's uh, installed on the, the customer side. Uh, this modular project for the TT1000, which was started uh, 10 years ago, uh, is, is also behind us. So I think we are ready. Uh, to go back with the, the new challenge and the, the industrialization of the, the compact rhododron. For that, uh, we would like as many inputs as possible from the industry uh, because we, we know that uh, the industry has significantly changed, changed sorry, uh, the last uh, 10 years. And so we'll, we'll start again uh, this second part of the year and working on these compact uh, low footprint systems and uh, explore different possibilities uh, for that for the next, um, the next innovation. I hope it answers the question. It did. Thank you so much, Jeremy. And wanted to mention that we will be in touch tomorrow with a poll for everyone attending today. And again, we'll be in touch with today's uh, video. Uh, moving right along, just to get to a few last questions. Uh, Jeremy, you did not talk about the pulsing model presented in the previous IMRPs. Uh, Why? Isn't it relevant for X-ray? 
<laughs> very a lot of very good questions today. So the pulsing mode was the biggest innovation of IBA for the accelerators. It was a, another great idea from Michel. Uh, which allows uh, energy savings, uh, making more compact accelerator, making the high energy that I talked about. But actually, for X-ray, it doesn't really impact the process. Uh, the reason is that the beam power is so high uh, compared to the cavity power that you cannot save any more energy. So actually, the, the electrical efficiency of a TT-1000 is above 50%, and pulsing would not help. Uh, to, to, to further increase that. And so pulsing is more for small machine, uh, but still uh, we developed a lot of uh, fast electronics uh, and, and everything we developed for the, the pulsing of, of small machine is also included on the TT-1000 and it can be used uh, for tuning, for safety functions, for, uh, for different uh, diagnostic uh, purposes, uh, but indeed it's less relevant for X-ray because the efficiency is already uh, up the roof. Thank you so much. And to echo Jeremy, wonderful questions from our audience today. We certainly appreciate your participation. Uh, Fred, one more for you. What is the smallest equipment for food sterilization? Uh, how many square meters of buildup area would it occupy? So typically, uh, Jeremy told you that we, we, we do not need to have a full high power uh, uh, rhodotron. So we can use the, the other one, but mainly the size of those ones are quite identical. Um, so that there will not be a, a big impact there. And so when we look at the, the size of the treatment area, we are speaking about something around 800 uh, square meter uh, to, to be able to treat the product and to have uh, dif the different uh, conveyors that are doing the, their job as they, they, they should do, mainly to have some rotation at different position of the, in, the, in the, the process and so on. So that's the typical treatment area we will have there. Lovely. And one more question for Jeremy. And Jeremy, please help me so I'm not uh, butchering these, these acronyms in here. How much is the processing capacity at 7.5 uh, MeV in terms of, I believe it's kilogram tons an hour at 100 kW beam power? So these, these are very specific questions, and I, I don't want to, to give a, a number which is not uh, significant. Uh, I, again, we are very pleased that we have a, the, the support team as a really... Uh, been enlarged and we can calculate everything in detail. We can run the experiment in Strasbourg to have the real data to estimate these numbers. It depends a lot on the, the product, the dose, the distance to the product. Uh, do we need, what kind of DOR do we need? So for example, simply changing the overscan on the product uh, will have a, a big impact. Uh, will it be a low density uh, product or high density? And so these numbers can vary quite a lot, but we can really nail them down very precisely, uh, more precisely than, than ever, I would say. We have a very uh, complex you know, model which uh, calculates all the, the, the process data and then convert it to a business case where we take the local uh, uh, labor cost into account, local cost of electricity, uh, importing fees, etc., etc. And so I would say connect to us and let's take a 15 or half an hour to make something precise. I don't want to give a, a rough number here, which uh, would, wouldn't be uh, actually uh, relevant and uh, significant. I'm sorry about that. I know I always get, always get these questions, but uh, <laughs> it's really difficult to answer them uh, live like that without having all the data. No problem. We certainly understand. And attendees, you can see that all of our presenters were kind enough to provide contact details here. Uh, if you certainly have any more questions for them, you can reach out to me directly at webinars at q1productions.com. Uh, thank you so much to all of our attendees for investing your time attending these uh, various courses throughout the series. We've loved your participation and are looking forward to um, seeing you again at the fall series. Uh, truly, I cannot thank enough the IB industrial team, uh, Mr. Fred Desailly, Jeremy Brisson, uh, Dominique Vincent, Pierre-Yves Louis, uh, the whole team at IBA. It's always a pleasure working with you. It was fantastic to see your beautiful state-of-the-art facility here in Brussels uh, today. Again, to all of our attendees, we will be sending out that video for you to take a look at, and the IBA team will be in touch with a poll tomorrow as we plan our future webinar series. Uh, panelists, any uh, final closing remarks before we sign off today? You tried uh, to you tried Pierre. -Yves. Okay. <laughs> Apologies again about that, Pierre. -Yves. Pierre -Yves is, you know, I did a mistake in the video. Pierre -Yves is actually celebrating the, his twenty years. 
Ah, plus congratulations. Ivier. So he's going to get a gift from IBA. So maybe that's the best concluding words from Pierre-Yves. <laughs> congratulations to Pierre-Yves. Um, happy to have everybody share feedback and ideas for the next webinars with the IBA team. I uh, want to wish everyone a wonderful um, rest of the day, uh, wonderful summer months, and we will be back um, to hear more from the IBA team in the fall. Everyone be safe and be well. Thank you again and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, thanks. Thank thanks a lot, Brooke. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.